Alright, episode 13. My check one, two. Nice. How's it going, Patreon? I hope you guys have had a, had a fabulous weekend. And I hope that you are gearing up for fabulous week this week um i just got back from uh, a little weekend little weekend getaway in um moab utah which is known for its desert arid landscapes and its giant rock formations i did a little little mountain biking a little bit of rock climbing it was my first time climbing outdoors that was really fun uh i got sunburned um, uh, my muscles are very sore from not having ridden a uh, mountain bike for a long time, <laughs> but, uh, it was a really good time. Uh, we were celebrating my friend Chelsea's birthday and it was just Chelsea, Chelsea knows the most incredible people. So she got together all of her favorite people and we spent the weekend doing stuff that Chelsea loves. And it was really, it was really, really awesome. Um, anyway. There's a handful of new Patreon people. Thank you guys. It's so nice to have you. Um, we'll be doing our Zoom call this week. No. Forgive me. Next week. Um, probably on a week night. Unless you guys wanted to do it this weekend. But I'll post it. Oh. Next weekend? Oh, man. This is going to be tight because I'm going to Chicago. We'll figure it out. I'll put up a, an announcement thing. So... Um, uh, I think I'm going to move my phone away because I think the interference is pretty bad. Here we go. Hello and welcome back. That was, I stuttered. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome back to another episode of Education 101. I am your host, Not Straight Kate, and I probably need to take a shower. So <laughs> cue intro music. Oh, man, just playing. Oh, that's the garage door, and it's very loud. Welcome back to another episode. Huge shout out to my Patreon subscribers right now. Um, you guys, the subscriptions have been so helpful, and knowing that uh, there are people out there who are willing to support means the world to me. Uh, so the podcast is brought to you by my Patreon subscribers. Hop onto the Patreon I've kind of sucked at it recently other than uploading the video versions of my podcasts, but I am getting back into the swing of things. So Patreon people, just know there is good stuff coming your way. I'm so sorry that it has been so long. Also, we're getting ready to do our one-on-one -on -one calls. Probably should schedule those for this week, honestly. Um, anyway, if you're looking for a way to support me on this journey of podcasting and telling stories, check out the Patreon or... Go check out babygaymerch.com. Pick yourself a hot I'm gay beanie or a kind of gay beanie, you know, depending on where you fall on the spectrum of sexuality because it is a spectrum, which is why I also say you don't really have to pick a label for yourself. Just you're somewhere on the spectrum. <laughs> um, I just got back from a weekend in Moab, which was a much needed getaway. That was really nice. Um, if anybody's headed out to Utah, and uh, wants to see something that's really cool or spend a day exploring the wonders of Utah, you should check out Moab, Dead Horse Point, Arches. There's a lot of really cool stuff out there. So uh, give that a little look-see if you're in the area. Um, hit me up if you're in the area. If you're driving through Utah, you want to go get like a beverage or something. And by beverage, I mean water. Because I'm trying to drink just water at this point in my life. <laughs> um, let me know. I'm always down to go meet you guys. Um, I would really, I would really hate it if somebody saw me out in public and like felt like I was not approachable. Like that is the worst thing. I, I love it when people say hi to me. I just met Michelle in a coffee shop the other day. I went to go get um, a beverage with my friend Morgan and uh, I got a mint tea, I'll have you know. But we were sitting there for a second and we got up to leave and Michelle um stopped me and said hello and we talked for a minute and uh we're probably gonna go do like breakfast or dinner sometime this week I'm very excited so I do love it when you guys if you see me out please say hi please like I might not have like a ton of time in the world but it does mean so much to me when people approach me and just introduce themselves like I love that please don't be afraid to come say hi to me it doesn't matter what I'm doing just come say hi you can yell baby gay and I'll be like oh my gosh 
<laughs> somebody who knows who I am. So um, please don't, don't feel like you can't come say hello. The podcast episode um, this beautiful Monday, if you're listening on a Monday, if not, it's a different day. Um, but it's kind of revolving around a message that uh, someone sent me on Instagram. Her name is Hannah. And she was talking to me about, she referred back to one of my first episodes about this, these layers of coming out and how when we come out, we also go through this evolution of like how we present ourselves. I just want to read something from uh, her message. Hannah, I should have asked you if you're listening to this. I'm so sorry. But I feel like it's a really good question. She was in one of my TikTok lives and then popped on for a podcast uh, request. Um... She said, I've noticed that a lot of queer people, I've noticed with a lot of queer people, not everyone, obviously, we're speaking generally, that somewhere along that journey, we also evolve in how we present ourselves, usually along the lines of our outward presentation, becoming an increasingly more accurate representation of our most authentic selves. She said, I'm interested to know if that was a part of your journey and how you think your outward presentation affects how we accept ourselves and live more authentically. Um really great message and a really great topic too. Um, and I think it's something that's incredibly interesting to touch on. Um, but I, as, as I was reading her message, I thought to myself, yeah, absolutely. Like my outward presentation now versus two years ago, um, has changed quite a bit. I think when I was still in the initial stages of coming out, and trying to navigate that, for the most part, I tried to be as straight passing as I could. Like, I didn't want anybody to look at me and go, oh my gosh, I think she's a lesbian. <laughs> like, um, I also, that's not to say that I wasn't comfortable with my appearance. I was, for the most part. Um, maybe I didn't even know that I would be more comfortable with a different kind of aesthetic or a different kind of style, which happened probably post my first girlfriend. It's probably just started with, um, about the time I got on TikTok is when I really started, uh, kind of changing my outward presentation. And I think we see this a lot. Uh, you talk about stereotypes, like, you know, the, girls go out and get super short haircuts or the undercut is one of the things that, uh, you, you think is a dead giveaway for like bisexuals. It's just, you know, there's just these little stereotypes that I think people even sometimes before they come out are trying out different ways of how they look and how they present themselves to other people. And I don't even know that it's necessarily for other people. Um, initially, like, I think there is, there is a lot to dressing yourself up the way that you think you look best, right? I mean, for a long time, when I was still in my I'm going to try and date guys thing, I wore a lot of, like, cute sweaters, you know, kind of baggier, cute sweaters. I really was, that was a whole phase for me of cute sweaters. I really liked those. Um, I never wore like button up shirts prior to coming out. I just like didn't do it ever. <laughs> so that was one thing that kind of really changed for me. Um, and I realized, and it wasn't even that I was like, oh, button up shirts are gay. It's just, I, I was like, oh, button up shirts, like they probably don't really look good on me. Like it's not, eh, it's not really worth my time to like try them on or try them out. And then I bought a button up shirt. I saw one that I really liked. I still remember it. It's this white one with these little blue, teeny tiny, cute little flower print on it. Like it's a dude's shirt, but it looks really good on me. <laughs> like, um, I think it, at, when, I, when I decided that I was just going to date women, that era of my life where I switched my dating preferences to just women, that's really when my style started kind of adapting to what I thought I looked attractive in, if that makes sense. And I was, that's actually very surprising now that I think about it because 
when I was trying to date men, I dressed how I thought men wanted women to look. And then when I started dating women, I was like, I'm going to dress how I think women would like for me to look. And as fate would have it, (coughs) as, bless me, as fate would have it, I, I find myself to be more attractive when I dress for the female gaze. As in female homosexuals and the female gaze of women looking at me. (laughs) Uh, Probably should say that part again because the driveway door. Uh, Maybe the garage door isn't going to close again. Patreon people, you're the only ones that are going to see me just sitting here for two minutes. Waiting. Now it's closing. So that is the thing that is surprising to me. When I was trying to date men, I dressed how I thought men would find me most attractive. And it wasn't necessarily because I found myself particularly attractive in those clothes. It's just what I thought men would want me to wear. Word to the wise, do not dress for other people. (laughs) Dress the way you feel most comfortable and confident in. Dress the way that makes you feel like you could rule rule the world. You're just going to start, you know, being the boss of everything. Dress in a way that you find yourself to be attractive. Which is what happened when I started kind of changing my attire a little bit. This is about the time that I started adopting boots primarily. Timberlands, the Thursday boots... Uh, my Doc Martens. Um, if I was wearing like a sneaker or something, it was a pair of Vans. Uh, stopped wearing heels so much unless I was going to some event or whatever. So when I started dressing, when I when I switched my dating preferences over to women, that is when I started dressing in a way that number one, I thought women would find me most attractive, and number two. That also happened to be the way that I found myself to be most attractive. That's when I started like looking in the mirror and being like, oh, like I like how I look this way. Button up shirt, cute pants, some boots, or like a t-shirt with the hoodie underneath. You guys know that I'm always, I always have like a hoodie on. Um, the backwards hats I started wearing more often. I joked with my friend Katie about how I've been wearing a hat since the day I came out. Like, it's just become a permanent piece of my wardrobe is having a hat on. Um, not because I don't like having my hair down. That's not true. I lied to you. I do not enjoy having my hair down. I think it is a hassle. I think it gets all tingly. I think it is the most annoying thing. It blows in your face. It tickles your arms. I do not enjoy having my hair down, but I also am not going to cut it because I like it long, which really makes no sense at all. But that's just me. Anyway, so I found as I started to date women, I started to change up um, the way that I dressed. I got some more flannels, started wearing, you know, clothes that kind of um, made me look a little bit more masculine, honestly. Um, And I've always felt like I have, that I have, present tense as well, that I have a more masculine energy to me. And so starting to dress in a way that was a little bit more masculine was actually, it felt very true to character. That's not to say that I can't put a dress on and wear a dress and be comfortable in a dress. Like when I go to church, I I put a dress on. I, I enjoy it. I like the way I look in a dress, but in a, in a different kind of a way, you know? I don't know how to explain it to you guys. I just know that there's a little bit of a difference. And I've seen my friends go through this too, friends that have come out. Um, and I feel like it happens more so with like the more masculine presenting queers. Um, obviously, there are 
a lot of gays who come out and the wardrobe doesn't change at all. Our, our femme friends, bless their sweet, dominant, aggressive hearts, um, they do not change their wardrobe. They just keep be looking fine for literally everybody. So fine. And we love that about our femme ladies. We really do. They don't really change the wardrobe a whole lot. They just keep looking really, really good, which is fine because we all enjoy it. The problem for our femme lesbian friends is that also men really enjoy it. So, so there is a downside. There is a drawback to being, a, there are, well, there are pros and cons to being any kind of gay. Let me tell you that right now. But for our femme ladies who present very femme, the downside, the major downside is that men still think that you are attracted to them, which is just not true. If you have ever talked to a very femme lesbian, you know, they are not interested in men at all. They make it very, very clear. They make it very, very clear that they do not like men. So, and you know, on with side note here, why would femme lesbians like men? Like you're really femme, conventionally attractive femme lesbians that come out, right, as gay and they start dating women. Why, there's a reason I believe that femme lesbians are so like, no, I am not into men. Like, I do not like you, go away. I would be that way too if men for my entire life had pursued me and said gross things to me and objectified me, right? I also would be like, no, I am so into women. I would be that way too. My whole life though, I have been a straight five. You know, on the straight scale, I'm like a five. I'm like a seven. If you like, if you throw in personality, I'm like a seven. On the gay scale though, I rank, I rank a little bit higher, which I find to be incredibly fascinating to me. But femme lesbians that are attractive to men, that are also very attractive to women, the ones that are a 10 on the straight scale and a 10 on the gay scale, they've got it rough. And I would be very, if I was a femme lesbian, that men were constantly hitting on me, I would also be very outspoken about how gay I was. I would. Just to get men to just shut up. Men say the dumbest things, especially drunk men. Ugh, for the love there's a reason I feel like I don't really appreciate bars and it's because of straight drunk men. Ew. Gross. Fellas, if you can't drink alcohol and also keep your hands off of women, you shouldn't be allowed to drink alcohol, quite frankly. You're a disgrace. So you heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first. Folks, actually, you've probably heard it before many, many times because I'm sure there are so many women who are like, stop touching me, you drunk pig. Also, ladies, as a side note, another side note, you do not have to be nice or polite to drunk men just because they are persistent. Especially when you are insisting that they just leave, okay? You, you are not required or obligated to be kind at all, okay? Just tell them to get out of there. Anyway, back to our, how we present on the outside <laughs> and the struggle that it is for our, fem, for our femme ladies. I think the bisexuals probably face some of the same challenges of being uh, mistaken for being very straight, but it depends because, you know, they, they tend to switch it up a little bit, the bisexuals, you know? It's like, is she just a tomboy or is she gay? Because I also see her at like black tie events and she, she is classy. But also, I saw her at the skate park holding hands with a girl. Dude, if you saw her holding hands with a girl at a skate park, she's totally gay. Okay? Like, what? Um, I do think, I do think that the, uh, there is something to us evolving in terms of our outward appearance, though. You see it. I mean, you see people. I've seen so many TikTok videos of people doing, like, their little gay glow-ups. That's what I call them, a gay glow-up. When you see, like, these... <laughs> You see, like, little girls. <laughs> I'm thinking about some of my mutuals on TikTok that I've seen that I'm just like, oh, my gosh, of course. Like, of course you were gay. Um, where they show, like, little pictures of themselves when they're young 
or went like through their high school years. It's so fascinating to see like what people were like in high school and how we all tried to present as straight girls, you know, to the whole world. And then you're seeing all these mask lesbians at like 24, 25, 26, and they are looking fly. I mean, like they are attractive ladies, you know, but they're very, very mask presenting, very masculine. They're very masculine women and they pull it off, you know, but it's so fun to see the gay glow ups and to see the confidence that comes with it, you know, to n- it's not just a change in apparel. It's a change in how you carry yourself. It's a change in your attitude. Um, the energy you put off is so, so different. I think, man, I think back to two years ago, if I would have dressed the way that I dress now on most occasions, I would have felt, one, like I was making everybody uncomfortable. And two, I would have felt like everybody was like onto me or questioning whether or not I was gay or like, what's going on with Kate? Like, why is she wearing that? Like, what is happening? Like, who is she trying to attract? Sasquatch? Like, (laughs) Uh, but it is amazing to see the evolution of the gays. Um, I'm thinking of a friend of a friend. Well, she's my friend too, Corey. She just went on this uh, shopping spree and uh, maybe I shouldn't say her name. I'm thinking of a friend of mine who recently went on a shopping spree and bought a bunch of button ups just to try them out, you know, just to see. You know, and it's fun. It's fun to go and dress up and uh, and uh, see what you look good in that you never allowed yourself to wear or never allowed yourself to try on. Like some of these ladies that I see on TikTok that are doing these like transition videos where they go from like their pajamas to a suit and tie. I'm just like, I'm thinking of Rhea. Like, you guys, you guys have seen Rhea's TikTok videos, am I right? Like, when she goes from, like, just whatever to, like, boom. Now she's in a suit and she looks like she could be your dad. <laughs> uh, Rhea, I'm sorry. You probably don't listen to my podcasts. But if you do, <laughs> there's a reason that all your entire comment section is like, oh, my gosh, daddy. Like, there's a reason. There's a reason, but no, there's a lot of women, women who are, there are a lot of women who are more masculine presenting, who can pull off a suit and tie combo, black suit, blonde, Mel. Oh my gosh. Mel. Fabulous. I mean, as far as androgynous people go, Mel absolutely kills it. Holy cow. Like, man, it's very impressive. And I think part of the reason that it is so impressive, part of the reason that you look at these women and you go, oh my gosh, women or the theys, if we're going with the NBs, NB means non-binary. N, literally letter N, B. Sometimes I spell it out, E-N-B-Y. Who we're going for here is non-binary, right? The androgynous non-binary. The reason that it is so impressive and so attractive right? It's not even necessarily that we're looking at these women going, oh my gosh, like I want to date you. You're just attracted to the energy that they put out there, you know, because they are so confident in this look that they have going on. It is, it's a beautiful thing to witness. It is an incredible thing to see. And I'd love to see that in my friends. And I would love to see that in more of you. So if you're a person who's like, you know what, I need to switch it up. I need to switch up my style a little bit mess around with it. Start posting, start posting photos of yourself, different outfits. Who cares? See what you like. See what you look good in. Let yourself try on different things. Try on the suit coat look with the tie or the bow tie. You guys follow Anna on, uh, on TikTok. Anna Duda. Ah, Hold on. Let me find her on Instagram real quick. Anna. Anna Duda, I think is how you say her name. Anna, Anna, I don't know how to say your last name. I'm so sorry. But man, she has got a style. Very like, very mask lesbian, but just. Very mask lesbian, but pulls it off like it's nobody's business. If you don't follow Anna Duda, go check her out because she's got, she has got, she's got it down. 
to to a science. She posted a story the other day with some other friends of hers, and they were like wearing their buttons up, button ups. She posted a story the other day, and she was wearing like a button up with a bow tie, and with her friends, there were also masked lesbians, like button up with a bow tie. I was like, you go get it, guys. Like, yes, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Is like as you're coming out. I think Hannah had a really good point. Like as you come out in stages to yourself, to your close friends, to your family, allow yourself to make changes. Try stuff that you didn't try before. You know, and people, you're going to get a reaction from people every time. You're always going to get people that are like, "Mm, why do you dress like a boy? Why are you, why are you, that's like the men, why are you shopping in the men's section? Number one, because the men's have, the the men's section has the best t-shirts on the planet. Have you ever shopped in the men's section at Ross for t-shirts? Incredible. That's where all my favorite tees come from. And they're more comfortable. And for a lot of us that have like more athletic builds, I'm talking like broader shoulders and like bigger arms, the men's clothes just fit better. Like they fit better and they make you look better. Joggers. Joggers are my best friend. I love them. I'm just saying, allow yourself to experiment with your style. You know, look at, look at uh, a bunch of masked lesbians on the internet and be like, man, I really like that look. I wonder if I could pull that off and try it. Go for it. You might find something that you absolutely love and you go, oh man, I'm going to take this and run with it. And more power to you. More power to you. You know? Find something that you feel confident in, that you think you look good in, and then just own it. Who cares what people are saying about you? Oh, you dress like a man? Yes, absolutely I am because I am trying to attract the ladies, my guy. I wear better than you do. Hmm. Take that. <laughs> uh, man, allow yourself to try stuff. New stuff. It's always good. This whole process, the whole coming out thing, there's so much involved. I'm glad, Hannah, thank you for bringing this, that uh, topic to my attention because it's something that I went through without even realizing that I was going through it, honestly. Like, I didn't even notice how my wardrobe had kind of changed over time, but it definitely has. Like, I'm definitely more masculine presenting at this point. A lot of t-shirts, flannels, hoodies, joggers, Got a couple pair of uh, black diamond pants from my friend Chelsea. They're men's jeans, but I love them. They fit well. Like, you just got to try stuff out, you guys. Maybe don't try black diamond unless you have a friend who can get you a really good discount because those are expensive. And I do not recommend you pay full price. So see if you can find somebody who can <laughs> who has the hookup. Um, anyway, thank you guys for listening to another episode of Education 101. Um, We've got some exciting episodes lined up for you. Uh, We're going to delve into TikTok a little bit and talk about some things. We're going to start talking about different terms. Um, All sorts of fun stuff. I I have not been on the TikTok a lot recently because quite frankly, I, I just do not, I do not like it. It's every time I open the app, it's drama and contention and people hating on each other, and it's quite frankly just really gross. It's just really gross to watch, so. Um, But I've been enjoying the podcast. Uh, If you can, check out the Patreon. Check out the merch website, babygamemerch.com. Shoot me a message on Instagram. Again, uh, I love hearing from you guys. I know that it's it was a rough week this week getting back to everybody, but... um, I will be making time for that this week. So shoot me a message if you have a minute. A voice message works really well. I love listening to voice messages. It's nice to it's nice to hear you guys, not just hear from you guys, but to hear you guys. Um, I really appreciate that. So oh, stay tuned for the next episode. It's gonna be a good one. Thanks for listening, you guys. I hope you have an awesome, awesome week. Goodbye.